Hey folks, it's Sam. And as you can see, I'm here with my friend, Moss Vidal, Mahesh Ananda. Welcome, Moss. Nice to see you today. Nice to see you, Sam. Thank you for organizing this. Absolutely. And as you see, it says Ayurvedic and yogic healing in stressful times. So we're going to be talking about, you know, we're living in some pretty intense times with, we can see it with the world we're in and all the stuff going on. We're just coming out of eclipses and still, you know, we have a full moon in Scorpio. This is the second full moon in Scorpio. <laughs> we less if we need two in a row. Um, and so, you know, of course, we're dealing with these intense times. And so I wanted to bring Masvidal on because he's a longtime yogic and Ayurvedic teacher, healer. He has his own school called Dancing Shiva. If you don't know, Mas is actually quite famous. Um, he was even in the movie about Yogananda called Awake. Um, so I'm happy to bring him on. And he's also put together this amazing company called More Life Market that has all these incredible remedies. I have some here, Yoga Body. I have Prana Body. I have Chowan Prash. Really amazing. He's a great, um, dedicated, again, yogi, Ayurvedic practitioner and teacher. And so really blessed to have him on here. Before we get into the conversation, though, um, I you know want to just make sure people know to like and and share and subscribe to video. Again, you know I love putting these things together, but they take time. I hope you appreciate me doing this and people like Moss doing this. But so please share the word here. And as you can see, even at the bottom of the screen, it says Vedic Astrology Remedies Course. I I just taught this past weekend this course on remedies, and in fact, Moss is going to be coming and doing the Q and A um, and doing a special session with us on. June 19th, which is next week. So I'm going to open up the course again for some people that maybe didn't get the register last week, and you'll get to hear from Moss again. But again, in that course, um, it was like you know a total of about 15 hours worth of training, all these checklists and graphics and templates that we went over to really teach you about healing, uh, using the chart and understanding your nature as a descended soul who has come down into form um, and understanding what that means, understanding the remedies that align with the different elements and whatnot. So you really understand what you're doing instead of just mechanically asking for, you know, what gemstone should I wear or what this or that, and not even understanding what is being energized or activated. So again, the course was really to teach these things and to offer a lot of practical solutions. This is one of the, this is one of the um, frameworks that we worked off of the chakras, which are related to the elements. They're related to what are called karma indrias and yana indrias. They also form what are called koshas. So we really went deep into this. It was very much a class on classical Sankhya philosophy and also Vedanta tantric philosophies and really how spirit is created through form and then how to approach healing afterward. Because if you short circuit that part, then the thing you're trying to heal is not even within your own grasp. So we handled a lot of that over the weekend, um, and we had you know very practical steps of how to analyze the chart, starting with the ascendant, then examining the important factors, then looking at the moon, then finding the path that leads us to our svadharma and to our highest truth. And again, the course is only only forty seven dollars. It's it's actually fifty percent off right now, and you get all of these bonus classes, and you get all of the course material now as well, as well as having this session with Masvidal next weekend. So today we're going to talk about these things. And actually, we're going to really uh, focus on some of the stuff that we're dealing with now in general, like with the intense times that we're in and really how yoga and Ayurveda in general and very specifically help us align. Like, for example, we're about to start the summer. There are things that we can do for the summer. And actually, Mas, I, I went to the More Life Market um, website few minutes um, um, actually before we started and saw there are things for the summer and oils and things like that. And so just in an open and general sense, like we were talking about before we started, what, um, where would you like to jump into all of that? It's really up to you um, because you're the expert. Well, uh, thank you for this great introduction and uh, for putting together such practical programs that um, can really help so many people. And what I really appreciate about what you do 
is that you are um, taking a vast and complex and ancient wisdom tradition and you are making it um, available to everybody. And I think this is a great place to start because we want everyone to know that this wisdom is for everybody. This is not just for people who wear robes and live in caves um, or are just for doctors that uh, get a major degree in Ayurveda. Ayurveda, yoga, and the Jyotish traditions uh, are to be applied by all types, from the simple person to those uh, family uh, types to business types to teachers. And um, I think the bridge, the, the connection that Ayurveda shares to astrology is an important one that I think you seem to be drawing more interest in. More and more people are being um, informed of this relationship. And I think this is really important because we <clears throat> realize how influential the planets are. We know that obviously we have things that are called seasons. We have things that are called uh, cycles, all types of cycles. And these things uh, obviously influence the the way that we think, the way that we feel, the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. And so that in itself is Ayurveda. The cycles of astrology are basically, you know, mathematical equations, but the direct experience that we're having uh, with nature, with ourselves, is something that we are personally experiencing. With respects to the company, to the Ayurvedic products, um, this is an important part of my work. Uh, it's something I really enjoy, and, um, and I'm glad Sam is bringing it up. I wanna make a couple of points about this. One, you don't have to be a doctor to take these products or, or order these products. You don't have to be a full-fledged astrologer to take these products. It does help if you do understand some basic astrology. Uh, it does help if you understand your constitution, your Ayurvedic prakriti or dosha type. These things are helpful, but there are simple aspects of uh, the seasons and the practical mundane aspects of our life that influence the choices that we make and some of these products that can actually bring a lot of benefit to many of you um, who are interested in uh, astrology. And I thought a lot about astrology when I was uh, and still creating this line, we're, we're up to 40 products with uh, this More Life Market. And I think about that because I've been connected to astrology for two decades now. And I see a lot of astrologers um, making recommendations, upayas, and these remedies uh, that their clients need. People need remedies today. Um, the knowledge is out there, uh, but remedies in the form of things that don't have side effects, but actually have side benefits. When you take these supplements, there are no side effects. There are side benefits. You may take it for a certain dasha period, that you may be in. And that's one of the actually easiest things to do. If you know your dasha, right, which is a very sort of basic aspect of Jyotish and which is unique to Jyotish. I say, if you know your dasha, 
then you know your dosha because your dasha influences your dosha. That in itself is a very simple way to make decisions as to how to take and bring in herbal products and supplements. Very simple example. All right, let's look at malefic planetary dashas, you know, Mars, Saturn, you know, throw in the, you know, Rahu and Ketu, uh, and in some cases, the sun. There are some views that the sun actually is benefic, but many view it as malefic. Uh, from my perspective, from the uh, Ayurvedic perspective, it's malefic, the sun is malefic, if you're not following your truth, if you're not um, seeking your inner soul and you're building up your ego and doing very, living a very externalized life, and that also there's some considerations with regards to where the sun is in the birth chart. So it can have negative implications to your immunity, to your energy levels, to fertility, and these types of things. So if you happen, if any of you out there are in a malefic Saturn Dasha planetary cycle, if you're in, which is a 19 year period, by the way, anyone out there in that. And this also includes Sadi Satis. This also can include some transits, which we won't have time to go into in this uh, shorter video. But if, for example, you're in that Saturn period or that Rahu period, that is a very clear indication that Vata Dosha, the air element, is going to spike. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, all of you at doing uh, Sam's course just spent hours and hours talking about what air does and how it influences you when this soul, this consciousness descends into the body. Well, that means potential for dryness, potential for lightheadedness, uh, not making clear uh, choices, not focused. This uh, indecisiveness can come through. And this ungroundedness can come through. And so Ayurveda says, well, when air is high and your body is dry and your digestion is fickle, or what is referred to as vishama in Ayurveda, inconsistent erratic metabolism, then you need to turn to certain herbs and formulas that have a heavy quality a grounding quality, and a quality that brings sama, balance. In fact, we have a formula called sama digest, and it is specific to that to bring more balance to someone that doesn't have that regular bowel movement. And I see it uh, every day in consultations with my uh, clients and patients. Um, I, they're complaining of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. They're complaining of uh, constipation, uh, poor sleep, uh, all of the Vata dosha issues. And uh, there it is. They're in either uh, Rahu dasha, Saturn dasha, um, and even don't forget the moon. The moon has both a watery influence, but it also has an airy influence. So it, it sort of wanes, right? And it waxes. And so when that uh, moon is in a waning phase, it's going to have that vata uh, influence. Also, the moon dasha has that influence. So there are many, many periods, many, many cycles that influence vata, and I uh, will end on this point, is that more than anything, when we look at the planets, the birth chart, the transits, and everything that Sam is bringing in this body of teaching that he's presenting, 
more than anything, it is the air element. It is the Vata dosha that gets the greatest influence throughout a person's lifetime. It, it, it just, that's the way this structure is set up. There are more planets that do this. The shifts, the transits spike Vata, the seasons provoke Vata, and especially uh, the equinoxes. They're notorious for this because we have spring and fall are triggers for these shifts, these very airy shifts. And you see it, people are unsettled, unfocused in these types of things. So um, I'll hand it back off to you, Sam. Yeah, great. Hey, that's fantastic, Moss. And what we did talk about the way what was approached most in the weekend course was more of a because it's part of my training and I, I I'm careful not to get out of my um out of my real sort of wheelhouse. I definitely touched on Ayurveda because I've been using these principles and they're so enmeshed already in every in all of Sankhya philosophy and mainly because of my yoga background. I folk most of the most of the remedies were focused on lifestyle so that you don't need the remedy so much because the remedy comes in once you're not living in alignment with the lifestyle and really what the course was about was taking the chart and being able to understand what the sadhana is and what the spiritual practices are that we're already going to be gravitating toward so that we don't create the dosha that needs the remedy as much because this is also what winds up happening is we all have a basic nature that instead of it become instead of air and by the way as a person who has a lot of air there's a high tendency toward vata but really also focusing on the master essence, which is prana. So instead of it being vata, the spiritual practices, again, because it was more about the spiritual practices, not so much the remedies, which is the reason I'm bringing you in because you've developed a company that has the remedies. I, we were talking more about the practices and it's like this, for example, the practices that keep on in alignment with air so that it doesn't become vata, so that air becomes prana, not vata, are things like pranayama, things like, um, you know, saying mantra, because again, mantra orients that air and that space, and pranayama turns that power that can be deranged as vata into the master essence of prana, for example. Um, so we, I, I focused more on that part of it and being able to show the chart, of course, with a lot of case studies as well, where you can see exactly how this person, what the what the type of practices are and activities are that they already engage in and how you can see that in the chart and mainly using the classical paths of yoga, which are karma yoga, which more refers to the earth type of element, bhakti yoga, which more refers to the um, emotional or watery temperament, the Raja Yoga, which refers more to the fire, and the um, and the um, um, Jnana Yoga, which also refers, which would more refer to a tendency that air would have, and really just how to maximize our life so that our sadhana is reflective more of our nature, and also showing how the chart is already revealing this, that for the most part, people are already doing some version of what they should be doing. They just don't know that they're doing it. And so what astrology can do is allow those who have the skill to, to show people how to engineer the proper sadhana and spiritual practice in their life. Um, and so, but the other, but what you mentioned though is also very important because I, I plan on doing an, a, a, the next course on Ayurveda astrology and being able to, like we did at your at the Casa Tejas a couple of years ago, where we literally took and examined that all the planets, and I'll just say this to you and 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 invite your reflection, all of the planets bring a quality of either their dosha or their master essence. And and I also really focused on the fact that Saturn and Rahu especially are the main planets that derange vata and that bring disease because most disease is its origin is some kind of vata derangement, but they also bring a greater capacity for prana. And when we get that under control, it's enormous prana, not just vata. The sun, of course, is called malefic because it brings that pitta, 
But you also have those planets, for example, there's an excess of Jupiter where there's too much Kapha, too much, you know, Venus is too much. All the planets can bring the excess. It's And when the Dasha runs, as you said, it's just bringing that elemental potential into our life that, and then we need to orient and acclimate our sadhana to be reflective of that Dasha cycle. That was part of what was in the course and also the transits. So just that's a sort of, sort of part of the reflection back. Mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense? And I would imagine that you will be treating all of those um, Ayurvedically. Yeah. And ultimately going to that point, you know, of converting Vata uh, into its balanced form as Prana. Right. Uh, the greater part of Ayurveda is uh, a big emphasis on managing that and balancing that, you know, in general, the use of oils. Right. This uh, is exactly what I mentioned because it's related to the skin. I'm sorry, just real quick, but in that, in, in, in that chart of the elements and the karma indris and yana indris, like we broke it down in Sankhya. First you have the five elements, the Panchamahabhutas, and then they break out into the organ of knowledge, which is the knowledge of the element through a sense organ, and then an organ of action through like the skin, for example, with air. We get knowledge of air through the skin, and then we act on it through the hands, um, et cetera. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, oil is, again, it has a heavy quality um, and it's one of the things that we constantly encourage uh, people to do. It's, it's, it's staple Ayurveda. It's actually a cornerstone to longevity, to greater immunity and balance through the fluctuations of the cycles. So any of you that uh, aren't applying oil, uh, externally, um, I would highly consider it. Uh, and those of you that aren't so conscious about what oils you intake internally, uh, I would give that some greater consideration because just sprinkling a little bit of olive oil on everything uh, doesn't always work. Uh, there are many oils and Ayurveda gives much knowledge as to uh, when to use more oil, when to use less oil. And, um, you know, diet shouldn't be overlooked. We can't just, just say, well, I'm vegetarian, or I follow a plant-based diet, or I eat organic. Um, there are many more factors to consider. And... Uh, I think having some basic knowledge of Ayurveda is important. And that's where uh, the oils we've, we, uh, More Life Market offers, uh, I think we're up to nine different oils, highly, highly concentrated, very, very rich oils prepared in a traditional way um, so that people can apply them and massage them to their when the screen comes up i want to show because this is here it is with it it it, it says pitta oil here's the one kapha vata pitta tridosha yoga body like that yeah. one screen that just came had all of those four dosha so if you do know your dosha there's literally the oil there i can also yeah. say just really quickly this is one of the things that i did talk about um specifically relative to practices that i know because i've practiced them is to pacify vata. I said one of the main treatments is oil on the skin. I also said things like mantra and all of that too on a, on a more psychological level and on a more consciousness level. But I said one of the classic Ayurveda remedies for vata dosha is oil. It's grounding. And they have different properties. Like I happen to know, I'm pretty sure, at least maybe you'll correct me, but that, for example, coconut oil is more cooling. Sesame oil is more warming. They have more properties. So again, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to slather oil on myself because it's, they have different qualities. So yeah, that's, that's a classical Ayurveda remedy that I did mention. Of course, I also mentioned things like colors and all like that, but that's a very classical oil. Um, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but yes, please continue. No, no, no. The, the, that's a good point. And I'm glad that you're bringing those 
those things into what you're doing. I know doing. quite a bit more than I might let on, but I'm careful to not get out of my lane as well. Cause it's, it's, I've been doing it a long time as well, but sometimes I think people overstep, frankly, like a lot of people overstep acting like they know more Joe Tish than they do. So I'm very conscious to not overstep. Like I know more Ayurveda than I do. I definitely understand the principles very well, but specific remedies, I stay out of it because it's really not my job. Right. No, I think that's, that's what a good teacher teaches, right? Yeah. I, I feel the same way about Jyotish. I don't do things that I don't have a speciality in. Um, that's I what know. I love about you. I got to say, Moss is great in this regard. He's such a such a well known monster of of teaching and reputation and power. And so many like Moss do overstep because he does know a lot of Jyotish as well. He's a, he's also an astrologer, but. Well, again, I don't even like to say that. He so. doesn't even like to say that, but he obviously has been using it for so long, but it's because he's humble. But so many people who know so much less than Moss are like, oh, yeah, and Joe Tish, too. And they just go on and it's just not the same. So I yeah. want to probably say that as well. And I'm yeah. the same way. I know a lot about Ayurveda. I could just kind of go off and all. But that's why even in the main Ayurvedic remedies part, I read from Vamadeva's text and and the specific things that he said and I want to bring you in specifically for remedies because that's where you that's where you shine. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And I've seen it work. I you know I'm I'm fortunate that I've been able to apply it uh both in a clinical and uh counseling basis for for almost 20 years now. And and I focus on what I enjoy but also what I feel comfortable with, what I've been able to practice and apply. Um, and there's a lot there and I don't want, uh, and I'll say this because you're drawing a lot of Ayurvedic or uh, astrology students, is that share what you know, right? focus on what you know, Learning either of these systems in their entirety are is highly uh, unrealistic. Um, and just uh, share what you know and help humanity. If you know a little bit and you feel comfortable enough uh, with it and it's clear to you, share it with, with the, the many that know nothing about right. And that's what this is like, uh, you know, Sam's doing. But don't overstep, like you just said. Yeah, don't that's overstep. The, that's the yeah, same thing that I do. I tell my students right away, look, people are talking about this stuff anyway. You don't have to know as much as me to start sharing what you know, but don't go overboard. See, this is the, that was the other thing. Don't act like you know more than you do, because then people will start asking you, well, what do you think about this? And that's when people start getting tempted to hot dog it and make predictions that they're not equipped to make. And so you're practicing astrology relative to how it fits into your practice, which is the same way I practice Ayurveda. I, I make recommendations all the time relative to what I know and relative to what I'm what I'm what I understand about it. But I would never go and make these big Ayurvedic um, remedies. I say you should go to an Ayurvedic practitioner, but in general, oil on the skin or color therapy or mantra, these are the types of things, and I'll stay with that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm grateful that there are uh, people like yourself and more and more astrologers are turning to understanding a little bit more about um, Ayurveda. And um, and even in my view, it's okay if they uh, can recommend some oils. Uh, there's, you can't go wrong with that. Right. Again, side benefits, not side effects. Um, it's hard to really, unless you're getting into very clinical and chronic uh, diseases, um, it's really hard to make a mistake using Ayurvedic herbs and oils. Um, and if you're working with somebody that's looking for more balance and just a little bit more grounded and simple aspects that work with their lifestyle, you should be able to refer to the chart, uh, look at some basic factors there and say, hey, here, look, here's a product like this oil or uh, with references to the prana. Uh, we actually, I created a product called Prana Enhance. 
Um, and if you don't, I have it right here, Prana oh, Enhance. Yeah. yeah. People think I'm not, people think it. There it is, Prana <laughs> Enhance. I also have Yoga Body. Yeah. I'm working on my Yoga Body. Yeah. And I have the Chowan Prush. And the, the jam, yes. We call it Maha Rishi Jam. Maha Rishi Jam, not Chow. It, it, that's actually a good marketing choice because people are like, they see Chow and Prush and they're like, what in the world? Like, is what that? is that word? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but we explain that and uh, we tell the story around that. But uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have to understand the pharmacology of all of the herbs inside of these products. That's what that product line was designed for to enhance Jyotishis, or at least first level Jyotishis, um, to be able to, to complement their practice in a way that is safe, that is supportive, and that it gives them more of a holistic, integral approach. And it's not just the stars, it's not just planets. You're bringing in the, the system that actually works with Jyotish. All that follow Jyotish, see, this is the difference between Western astrology that doesn't have a system yeah. of health and well-being, but Jyotish does. It's yeah, and that's why that that's really what I focused on. That what I focus on because it's also my practice. And again, back to you have to teach what you know. Uh, what I know and what I've done is the meditation for a long time and classical raja yoga training as well so i understand all those paths of yoga and all that sadhana like and how it's affecting things like the elements and all it's all integral around these core practices and ayurveda is just another way to really get in there and engineer the elements in the body and with nature in a different way so i approached it the way i approach which is on that daily sadhana routine and how those things are working but yes this is there is none of this in western astrology it doesn't start with Sankhya and how spirit comes into form and chakras and elements and yana injuries, karma injuries. None of that is there. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have any place to begin. It's just, or in fact, in, in the Western traditions, what they wind up doing is trying to recommend some Indian, ver some Eastern version. They they have chakras, but then they've messed up the rulers. There, there's no There's no relationship because it all comes from ancient Greek ideas and stuff like that. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, and the Greeks were influenced by India. India. So um, we'll go to the source. Um, we have an integral tradition here, everyone, that provides everything that you need, the psychology, the balance to your biology, the stars and understanding karma. And that we have to be grateful that in this day and age um, that it's so accessible to all of us that we're here on modern technology, having conversations about ways to improve the health of our brothers and sisters and prevent. This is about prevention. We're not emphasizing enough prevention in our lives. Uh, Jyotish is a prevention system. It's a navigation system. And by understanding these cycles, you can prevent catastrophes, making wrong decisions. And thankfully, Ayurveda is completely aligned with it. And this great system that you know about yoga, they're here uh, to work together. So I want to encourage you all to continue following Sam's uh, sort of carrying the torch of bringing more um, astrology interested individuals to embrace Ayurveda. Uh, look to Ayurveda. It's there. It has remarkable remedies on all levels, dietary. Uh, I know you all went into the, the psychological aspects uh, with the mantras, the lifestyle, um, it is unbelievable. And get your body, get your mind out of the way. For the most part, for most of the world, the body and the mind are in the way. People 
aren't enjoying their life because of body problems. They aren't enjoying their true state of happiness because the mind is cloudy and they are more orientated around the clouds than they are on their true source of pure consciousness. Yeah, and this is real this was really the focus is is that source and again the practices that instead of and again they're all it's all always a holistic approach but that the full access and the full power is always there. This is why well, what 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 we mentioned earlier sadhana the daily practices that you're doing become the core essence in your life like the best ayurvedic remedies are a balanced sadhana practice where you balance where you balance the elements through your sadhana practice with a little yoga where you're aligning the elements channeling them you know properly at least as a sort of baseline lifestyle now again it all of our bodies are going to die at some point. So it's not like, oh, now I'll never die. No, there's always going to be decay and you always need to do all of it. But the baseline approach to your life here is going to start with some kind of sadhana, which really also goes back to like those yogic methods and those kinds of things, which is what I really focused on because that's my, um, because that's my comfort zone. You know, I did want to also just ask Moss while we, you know, before we run out of time, a little bit about, you know, because I do a lot with the current, um, you know, stuff that's going on, you know, in a general sense, how do you, you know, if you recommend, and you don't have to, but ways to like, um, again, for me, the the most important factor, and it was focused on over the weekend, was that these daily practices and this daily sadhana will establish such a foundation in your life that the day-to-day crazy world and all that affects you much less. Um, but do you have any uh, recommendations or ideas about even maybe some of the current astrological stuff with the, with the Saturn Rahu, I'm sorry, the Saturn retrograde or the Rahu or the, these kinds of things that are happening now or yeah. how do you approach those things? Yeah, no, this is great. And I obviously, uh, this is a very, uh, important aspect to um, applying uh, remedies. Um, the one uh, a couple of points I'll make is this: this is a huge conversation. Yeah. But um, the big uh, one of the things that I'm I'm giving a lot of importance to is particularly the the Jupiter move into Pisces. Um, overall, as many of you know. Uh, very positive, right? Now Jupiter's in its own sign, very comforting. Uh, it's not battling that relationship it was having with Saturn for for uh, too long. <laughs> we went through, <laughs> as we can see. And I, my view is that when you look at what we went through in the last two years, um, particularly with the pandemic, um, you know, we can see that Jupiter had, uh, in some many ways, a lot to do with that. Jupiter's move, uh, sitting in with Saturn, uh, created this type of uh, affliction. You can call the health issues, indicate the lockdown. Uh, and guess who won, right? Uh, Saturn did. And again, that very powerful influence to Vata, uh, Sam just mentioned the retrograde Saturn. Uh, again, we have to constantly keep an eye on Saturn's moves with in this respect because it's a primary um, influence for Vata in general in all individuals. And keep in mind, what does Saturn represent? It brings up karma health, diseases. And so everyone needs to be aware of Saturn's influence, not only in general, but where is it in our own individual's chart? Because it's going to be unique. The experience that you have is unique to you. But in general, it's something we need to keep an eye on. Okay. Now, 
the, uh, one more thing, and I'll let you counter to that. Yeah, it, sure. Uh, Mars. So Mars is there. Um, we we see it there with Jupiter. Typically, Mars, um, you know, uh, much shorter cycles. Jupiter has its year-long cycles. I think Mars is at about forty days or so um, in its transits. In aggregate, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Mars is usually very afflicting to Pitta. Um, in the sign of Pisces, not as damaging because it's a water sign. So it's kind of muddled a little bit, right? That it's aggressive nature, it's brash nature, it's I'm going to just turn and burn kind of quality is a little bit subdued there. So, uh, so there's a little bit of a plus there uh, in that regard for you fiery types because Jupiter is what? Heavy, heavy. And so that offsets that. But then what do we have coming up? What's apt after Pisces? Yeah. It, right. This is where I see some Pitta conditions coming up. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Okay. Mars yeah. Mars and Aries is, uh, not to mention Mars Rahu and Aries. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying since last year, since uh, since I did my forecast from last year, I was like, the middle of July to the early August, um, we might be seeing. I mean, in the world, we're going to see some stuff. But yeah, he's 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 a, uh, you know, he's yeah. doing some sadhana. He's like the he's like the asura that does the sadhana to get a boon from Shiva, so that he could come out and conquer the world. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, it's that's interesting, right? And 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 it happens right uh, mid July in the summer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In in the the height of the sun's uh, peak. Yeah, we'll move them forward. So you can see here, like, um, so he's they're exact on August first. That's exact. But if you go, if you start getting, I mean, once he really gets set up in there, even here, you could say, okay, this is sixteen degrees. But once Mars sets up in Aries, he's going to be. He's already a a handful there in general to want to change things with a lot of aggression. That's what it is, right? Because he's yeah. he's like, okay, now. Mars is there to try to fight to change the things that we don't think are right. So again, he's a ball of fire to want to do that. Rahu is there making it just explosive. And again, so as soon as he goes in there, but then as he gets closer, this is always the way the transits work. We'll feel it as soon as he goes in, but we're going to really feel it by the time we get to the middle end of July, early August, August 1st, they're exact. So this is when we're going to really start to see it. And then you have to also, what happens is as it gets closer, it gets more urgent, but then you have to start looking specifically at the lunation cycles that happen, like the full and new moons that happen as Rahu and Mars are close and these other things. Then you start to see where the real potential for explosive stuff starts to happen. But yeah, he's, he's, um, he's ready to pack a punch. <laughs> That's why the times right now are so intense i think because it's kind of a prayer it's kind of a calm before a storm that's coming yeah. i would say yeah interesting and that may you know that not it will impact certain people in a more um, aggressive way uh, and again it's going to depend on placement in your uh, birth chart and many other factors but we're speaking on just I would say first level, second level factors, right? We and people have to understand that there's layers upon layers that this conversation could go. But we're looking at the blatant, right? What's clear, what's there, and and there's a lot that all of us can do to mitigate this and soften the the impacts of this. By the way, I wasn't speaking about a effect on personal health either. So just to be clear, this is, we're, we're, we're actually describing different things. So yeah, I, I was talking about like mundane events and all of that stuff. And you're talking about the effect on healing. So I just want to be clear and you're absolutely right. The, and, and again, this was one of the things that we talked about over the weekend and where I always come from things is again, this is why having a daily sadhana and daily practices and whatnot, what then happens is that as these planets move, even this Mars Rahu in Aries is going to be enormous power for a yogi. 
again, if you're not doing yoga, if you don't have a channel to that tejas, the power of the fire, then it can just blow your pitta through the roof, particularly like if you have the moon in Aries or your ascendant is Aries or you have debilitated Saturn in Aries, then this kind of thing can really kind of really blow you up. But even if you have those placements and in your life, a through line in your life is that every day you get up and you do your practice and you do this, then what happens when these, quote, difficult transits occur and even when they hit sensitive points in your chart it's just power and it delivers power. Like right now I have K2 right on my moon. Now, again, if I didn't have a spiritual practice, I'd be kind of jumping out of my skin because it's it's not an easy transit. It's one of the hardest on some level if you have a lot of attachments because that's what the moon is. But if you don't, or if you at least can see through the attachments, then what's happening is that power of K2 to be the like real moksha karika is right in my mind, like right at the forefront of my consciousness now. So the fact that it's kind of erasing all of those attachments is not hard it because the liberating quality of it is there. But if I don't understand liberation and I think I'm just this world, then that K2 going over the moon is going to like, make me jump out of my skin. What you mean? I'm not my family. I'm not my money. I'm not my attachments. Oh my God. Then what am I? Well, I already know I'm not that. So K2 right on my moon is like, ah, it's one of those great moments where I get to actually really feel the power of the moksha karaka right there. And that's always the case, regardless of the dignity, even of the planets in your natal chart. So you should also understand all of these planets as they move through, they're all power. They're all true power. They're real power. But if you're not connected to the real power, then you're just connected to karma and your attachments. Then most of the transits are just going to derail you on some level. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great point. That's that's, that's a great point. So, yeah, yeah. These are the things I focused on in the course. This, this is what we talked about was how to inculcate these practices so that these transits. Now, again, it also doesn't mean that you might not bring in a remedy like, for example, Saturn transits, planets that have Saturn. I'm sorry, people who have planets um, right on the right on this sort of, um, you know, this sort of degree, which, by the way, I do. I have my Saturn right there, for example, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. Saturn is going to bring pressure onto that planet. Like if people have a planet in Aquarius or Capricorn and Saturn has been going over it, then you would a, a remedy for that planet that Saturn is going over because Saturn is going to be bringing Vata energy to that planet. Like if someone has Venus there, then Saturn will have been bringing that Vata derangement and pressure onto that Venus for, you know, for that whole time. And and again, when Jupiter goes over a planet, someone has planets in Pisces, Jupiter is bringing this healing expansion to that energy right now. So this is really one of the most direct ways to work with what Moss was talking about, like with the transits in general. They're generally here, but especially, again, if someone has their ascendant at very late Capricorn or very early Aquarius, Saturn is right on it right now. So things to mitigate those, you know, like those oils and that kind of vata is very simple way to actually, um, you know, appease that stressful quality. Yes. Saturn and Rahu, by the way, I want to also mention Rahu is the other big vata planet. Wouldn't you agree, Moss, that it's also... Rahu, people like, let's say you have planets at this late stage of Aries with Rahu going over it. It's more like emotional Vata where you're, where it brings that kind of stress. And again, would you say that also the Vata stress with Rahu is also, um, you know, in a general sense, like oil and whatnot would also be sort of um, decent way to approach that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, the, that's a simple way. Simple. Yeah, simple. Uh, yeah. Simple. Very simple. Um, but I typically, you know, really hit it from multiple directions. As an operating practitioner, yeah. Yeah, herbs, uh, you know, even enemas are very uh, useful during those those periods. And for certain people, I will recommend uh, an enema cycle for could be months, could be a whole season. Um, so, so that you don't depend just on one modality. You really package it with three, four, five different things. And then it becomes much more uh, effective. One of the things that people overlook 
is uh, is the com combination of using ghees, what were called grits, um, with the herbs. It increases the potency of the herbs, the assimilation and digestive uh, digestibility of the herbs. And so um, we use these different types of ghees that are actually prepared with herbs. So it's not just um, the oil, uh, it's not just the plain ghee. And this is another thing that um, we use in Ayurveda. In a yeah, that's a professional Ayurvedic remedy for sure. And, and but you but but you would have an Ayurvedic practitioner or doctor look at you know look at your tongue yeah you, know, you know all that stuff so that you can then analyze it from that level. Um, yeah. You know. I, I don't want to take up much more of your time because you've been so helpful, but I, I, I did want to put, what is your regular website? Cause some people in the comments have been asking about contacting you further. We do have, I, I, I did drop the more life market link in, which I'm going to put in the description of the video too, but is it just the dancing Shiva website? How do people get a hold of you? Yeah. Dancing Shiva.com. Uh, let me put that in. And any final thoughts, Moss, about um, this subject? It's such a big subject, and I really appreciate you coming on. And by the way, if people do want to register for the Remedies course, you get to hear the stuff I was talking about, all these daily sadhanas, all these ways of understanding that. And then you're going to also get to hear Moss come on and do a class um, Sunday, June 19th. If you're hearing this afterwards, all those recordings are available. But any last things you want to mention, Moss? No, I'm just, I would just say thank you uh, for, for bringing uh, Jyotish and now Ayurveda to the people. And um, if there's any way that I can uh, help you all and help us, all of us, we're here together. We're working together um, as a, as a global community. And um Let's do this to support our, our community, right, and help support the effort to prevent. We need to do more to prevent uh, us from living like puppets in this material world. And uh, so reach out, and thank you, Sam, for putting those websites up. And, and I will see you all next Saturday, the 19th. Sunday, Sunday. It's oh, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday the 19th. Uh, for our little, much deeper discussion on these topics. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Awesome.